Hello, in this video I'm going to explain a well-known algorithm that will allow you to solve motion planning problems by making the robot behave as if it were a bug. That is, it tries to emulate the behavior that bugs have when moving around the environment. The aim of this presentation is to explain fundamental characteristics of bug algorithms as well as their main assumptions regarding with uh, the knowledge uh, about the environment and the robot. I will explain two fundamental algorithms known as type 1 and type 2 that use contact sensors for their implementation. We will see uh, their differences and analyze the worst and the best case scenarios in terms of traveled distance. Back algorithms assume a local knowledge of the environment, that is, that we do not necessarily to know all the objects uh, in the environment in advance or, or to compute uh, an offline path in the motion path planning problem. They can be indeed implemented online with data uh, coming from sensors. Like any motion planning algorithm, we will assume that the robot position is known and so it is the goal configuration. So we want to find the route between the robot and the goal. And if it's possible, a short one. The robot will behave like a bug, which means that it will incorporate basic algorithms such as wall following, obstacle avoidance, and some basic uh, motion primitives such as moving forward or turning. Bug algorithms can be implemented with contact sensors, although range sensors can be also used as long as we can estimate in one way or another the geometry of the obstacle to avoid. They are complete algorithms, which means that if there's a solution, they will find it. Back type 1 algorithm is a complete algorithm that its implementation steps are rather quite simple. The robot moves in a straight line towards the goal, until it detects an obstacle or it reaches the goal. In case of detecting an obstacle, the robot moves around it, uh, its perimeter, and once it has completed the full loop, the side is to move to the closest point to the goal, moving again around the perimeter. In the worst case, the robot will travel the half of the perimeter again. So uh, then uh, step one will be repeated trying to reach the goal. So in each iteration, the robot will be gradually approaching to the goal. Here you can see a sequence of the steps of this algorithm. First, straight movement towards the goal until it finds an obstacle. Then avoids the obstacle and departs from the closest point to the goal. So it first completes a full loop and then needs to find the, co the closest point. Then this process is repeated until the algorithm reaches the destination. Uh, type 2 algorithms poses a simpler situation that can provide even better solutions than type 1 algorithm, but in some cases. This depends on the environment, basically. Instead of performing a whole loop around the obstacle, it departs as soon as possible, exactly when it crosses the line, joining the start and goal configuration. At that point, the robot moves again in a straight line towards the destination, just like before. Here we can see an example with the sequence of steps of type 2 algorithm. In the simplest cases, this algorithm is generally more efficient than type 1 algorithm. However, there are cases in which, due to the shape of the environment, the robot can enter in a loop situation as shown. Therefore, we must modify this algorithm to avoid this loop. If we know the geometry of the obstacle, we can compute the proper direction that allows us to depart from the closest point to the goal. Therefore, the direction to take will depend on this condition to guarantee that the algorithm is complete just like type 1 algorithm, so every time we try to avoid an obstacle, we have to depart from a closest point to the goal. To finish this presentation, I would like to analyze the best and worst cases in terms of travel distance by each of the algorithms. Obviously, the best case for both algorithms is that the travel distance is just right the distance between the start and the goal configuration. However, this is quite unlikely because it implies that there are no obstacles at all. The extreme case is where every time the robot finds an obstacle, it is just right in the middle of the perimeter of the obstacle. Generally, type 2 algorithm will have 
a shorter travel distance as long as the number of intersection with this obstacle is small, ideally one. In this video, I have explained pack algorithms. It is a well-known motion planning technique used in simple robots with contact sensors. Thank you very much.